Lesson 46 God is the love in which I forgive. Hi there. Are you ready to delve into one of the core teachings of A Course in Miracles today? Throughout this course, we'll discover that some concepts we've always taken for granted are given entirely new meanings and unique perspectives. And at times, these revelations might strike you as not just mind-blowing, but truly revolutionary. Let's prepare to open our hearts and minds for Lesson 46 today. God is the love in which I forgive. God does not forgive because He is never condemned. How profound is this statement? Indeed, for forgiveness to occur, there must first be condemnation. And if God is never condemned, then He has no need to forgive. So, where does this leave us? Does it mean we don't need to forgive either? Not quite. Forgiveness is the great need of this world, but that is because it is a world of illusions. Forgiveness is a core teaching in A Course in Miracles, yet its point of view diverges significantly from conventional notions of forgiveness we've been taught by the world. As we progress through the course, we'll engage in a deep retraining of our minds to grasp this profound concept of forgiveness. For now, it suffices to understand that forgiveness is the means through which we liberate ourselves from the shackles of illusions. Let's never forget, when we forgive, we free ourselves from illusions, and conversely, when we withhold forgiveness, we are binding ourselves to those very illusions. And since what we perceive outside is merely a mirror of our inner state, when we condemn, we only condemn ourselves. So, when we forgive, we only forgive ourselves. How revolutionary is that? Wouldn't this change everything in how we interact with each other? Yet, we still need to add an important piece to the picture. Even if God does not forgive, because He doesn't need to, His love is what we need for us to forgive. Fear condemns and love forgives. Forgiveness thus undoes what fear has produced, returning the mind to the awareness of God. For this reason, forgiveness can truly be called salvation. It is the means by which illusions disappear. We might have learned that forgiveness is pardoning others for something they did to us, and our forgiving them positions us on a higher moral ground somehow. Today, we begin to embrace a new understanding. Forgiveness is the realization that what we believe someone did to us never truly happened, it was merely an illusion. And an even greater illusion was deeming our brother guilty of being something he is not. But don't worry, we'll get there. And we'll do this not for others, but for ourselves, for our own salvation, for freeing ourselves. God is the love in which I forgive. We'll undertake at least three full five-minute practice sessions today. As usual, let's start by repeating today's idea to ourselves. God is the love in which I forgive. God is the love in which I forgive. God is the love in which I forgive. Let's close our eyes and spend a minute or two searching our minds for those we have not forgiven. If we discover someone we believe we haven't fully forgiven, let's remember either we have forgiven them entirely or not at all. During these exercises, it's likely we'll identify quite a few individuals we haven't forgiven. As a guideline, it's safe to assume that anyone we dislike is a fitting candidate for our forgiveness. For each person that comes to mind, let's specifically name them while applying today's idea, for example. God is the love in which I forgive you, Tom. God is the love in which I forgive you, Sarah. God is the love in which I forgive you, John. This initial phase of the exercise positions us to more readily forgive ourselves. Indeed, after applying the idea to everyone who comes to mind, let's affirm to ourselves. God is the love in which I forgive myself. In the second part of the exercise, let's add related ideas to our central theme, such as. God is the love with which I love myself. God is the love in which I am blessed. These additional ideas can vary greatly in form, 
yet they should all orbit around our main idea. For example, I cannot be guilty because I am a son of God. I have already been forgiven. No fear is possible in a mind beloved of God. There is no need to attack because love has forgiven me. To wrap up our practice, let's repeat today's idea one more time. God is the love in which I forgive. Throughout the day, let's engage in our shorter practices as frequently as possible. We can either repeat today's idea in its original form or choose one of its related variations. It's important to apply today's idea specifically whenever it's needed, meaning whenever we notice any negative reaction to someone, whether they are present or not. In such moments, silently tell them, God is the love in which I forgive you. It's truly remarkable, isn't it? Can you feel the immense potential these exercises have in liberating us from our past, dissolving our present illusions, and even shaping our future differently? Don't undervalue their power. Simply give them a chance and experience the impact for yourself today. You're doing great! See you tomorrow for another enlightening lesson. Quick reminder, if you haven't yet watched the introduction to this video series, be sure to do so, as it lays the foundation for our journey together. Just click on the video link that will appear on your screen shortly. Did you enjoy the video and find it helpful? Please give it a like and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell, we have a new lesson every day. And if you've been with us for a while, please consider supporting the channel, there's a lot of love behind these videos. Check out the video description for more details.